Hello and welcome in. We're in a new chapter here, chapter 9 on electrochemistry. In this chapter, we'll do a quick review on redox reactions, and then we'll try to introduce electrochemical cells, specifically voltaic cells. Let's start with a review of redox reactions. Redox involves both an oxidation as well as a reduction. Oxidation is defined as losing electrons, whereas reduction is gaining electrons. Here's an example. We have sodium combined with chlorine to produce sodium chloride. Sodium is a neutral element to begin with. When it becomes part of sodium chloride, now it has a positive one charge. Because sodium has changed its charge by one, it has been oxidized. Meanwhile, Chlorine started off as a neutral element and now has a charge of minus one in the product side. Here, our chlorine atoms have gained electrons. They've been reduced. Really, we don't want to look at the charge, but we want to look at the oxidation number. Oxidation numbers, or oxidation states, are a theoretical charge for our atoms assuming that each bond is exactly ionic. So for something like sodium chloride, yeah, it's exactly the same as our charge. For something like water, it's not going to be exactly the same as our charge. Water has neutral atoms, but for our oxidation states, we get to make some assumptions. If these bonds are ionic, then our hydrogens would have a positive one charge, and our oxygen would have a negative two charge. Here are our rules for these oxidation numbers. First, we want to say that our oxidation states add up to the overall charge. If you have a neutral molecule, our oxidation states add up to zero. If we have a polyatomic ion, our oxidation states add up to the specific charge. Next, we can have some rules for some specific elements. Hydrogen almost always has an oxidation state of plus one. Oxygen almost always has an oxidation state of negative 2. Our highest priority is to give fluorine an oxidation state of negative 1. Once we can identify these oxidation states, we can look for elements where the oxidation state changes. If that's the case, then we have a redox reaction. Here are some practice problems. Take a moment and see if we can get the answer. And now let's start with question one. OF2, we have a couple of rules. Fluorine likes to be minus one. Oxygen likes to be negative two. And overall, our compound is neutral. The oxidation state for oxygen plus our two oxidation states for fluorine have to add up to be exactly zero because this compound is neutral. Our regular rules don't quite work here. We can't have negative two plus two times negative one equals to zero. That's not a true statement. So, okay, fluorine has priority here. It's more electronegative. It will have that negative oxidation state. All right, we can decide that our oxidation state for oxygen has to be actually positive 2 instead of the negative 2 we usually expect. For sulfur dioxide, oxygen likes to be negative 2. The sulfur we can try to figure out. We do know that this is a neutral compound. Our 1 sulfur and our 2 oxygens have to add up to an overall charge of 0 because this is a neutral molecule. Here we can see that sulfur has to be positive 4. Our last one, sometimes it helps to split our compound into its individual ions. Here we have hydrogen ions and chromate ions. Hydrogen we can see has to be positive 1. We have our rule for oxygen, it usually is negative 2. And for all of this to be true, the oxygens and our chromium need to add up to an overall charge of negative 2. Negative 2 here because that is the charge on this chromate 
ion. If we solve this algebra problem, our chromium has to have an oxidation state of positive 6. We can use our oxidation state to identify redox reactions. We can also balance our redox reactions. In order to do this, it's a little bit more involved than most other chemical reactions. We need to make sure that our electrons are also balanced, that we're not creating or destroying any electrons when we have our reaction written out. My favorite method for doing this is known as the half reaction method. We have a few steps we can follow. Separate our redox reaction into a oxidation half reaction and a reduction half reaction. We can balance each of these separately. First, balancing the elements besides hydrogen and oxygen. Then we can balance our oxygens, maybe adding waters when necessary. Then we can balance our hydrogens, adding H plus to balance those hydrogens. And finally, we can balance the charge by adding electrons. Once we have these half reactions balanced, we can recombine them, making sure that electrons do not show up in our overall balanced reaction. Let's illustrate that with an example. We have lead 4 oxide combined with iodide to produce lead 2 and iodine solid. We can split this into two half reactions. The first can be our lead reaction. PbO2 turns into lead 2+. Let's make sure everything is balanced. Okay, we have lead balanced, that's all we need. Now we can start to balance our oxygens by adding water. It looks like we need two more oxygens on the right, so let's add two water molecules. Next, we can balance our hydrogen atoms by adding hydrogen ions. We have four hydrogens on the right now because of those waters, so let's add four hydrogens over on the left. At this point, our elements are balanced. Now we need to make sure that the charge is balanced. We have four positive charges on the left, and we have two positive charges on the right. In order to even these out, we can only get lower. We want to get down to two plus on each side. So let's add two electrons over here on the left. There we have it. We've balanced our half reaction, the elements, and the charge. Let's have a similar approach for our other half reaction. I minus turns into I2. Let's start by balancing our elements. We need to have two iodines on both sides. Next, we can add any oxygens using water. All right, no need. We can balance any hydrogens using H plus. Again, no need. Now let's balance the charge using our electrons. We have negative two on the left, zero on the right. We can only get lower in order to get negative two on the right. Let's add a couple of electrons. Our last step is to combine these half reactions. We wanna make sure the number of electrons is the same in both steps. The electrons that we are gaining in our reduction are the same electrons that we are losing in our oxidation. Therefore, the number of electrons also has to be the same. Once we've ensured that this is the case, let's combine these two things together, all of the reactants and then all of the products. Again, notice that we've intentionally have the same number of electrons on both sides. We can simplify this down by subtracting two electrons from both sides. Our final answer now is just this, PbO2 plus four H pluses, plus our two iodides, turn into Pb2 plus, two waters, and iodine. It's always a good idea to double check. Let's make sure that our elements are the same on each side, and our total charge is the same on both sides. We have another practice problem. I'll leave this as practice, but if we want to check our answer, it should be this. When our redox reactions occur, well, we can visualize this with our example here. Zinc 
combines with copper ions to produce zinc ions and copper metal. On the left-hand side, we have zinc as a silvery metal. We have copper ions that are blue in solution. And when these two are mixed, they start to react. What happens is our copper forms as a solid, which is a nice brown, coppery colored metal. Our copper ions get consumed, we can start to see our solution become less blue. At the atomic level, we have zinc atoms turning into zinc ions, giving away electrons to our copper two plus ions in solution. As those electrons are transferred, our copper two plus ions turn into copper metal. Our zinc ion pops off into solution as our copper forms on the surface of our solid. This is a nice spontaneous redox reaction. Zinc metal is very reactive. If you put it into our copper ion solution, this will happen spontaneously, formation of solid on our chunk of zinc metal. A clever application of our redox reaction is an electrochemical cell. What we can do is separate our half reactions from each other in our redox reaction, have our oxidation happening in one beaker, and our reduction happening in a separate beaker. In order to facilitate this reaction, we do have to have our electrons transferred, so they need to be connected by a conductive wire, and we do need to have the appropriate solutions in our beakers in order to do this reaction. But if those things are true, we can do our redox reaction, but with our two half reactions occurring separately. If a spontaneous reaction occurs, this is known as a voltaic cell, and it will act as a battery. It will produce a voltage. Alternatively, if we have an electrolytic cell, this is a non-spontaneous reaction that we are forcing to occur by connecting this cell to a power source, to a battery. We'll start here by focusing on voltaic cells, and let's introduce some terminology. We can define our anode as the beaker where our oxidation occurs. We could define our cathode as the place where our reduction occurs. Our anode will produce some electrons. Our cathode will consume some electrons. In order for that to happen, we need to connect these, as we said, with some kind of wire so that the electrons can flow from the anode over to the cathode. When this happens, we have a flow of electrons. We get to produce a current. This current can be used to power devices. Here we're lighting up a little light bulb. The other piece that we didn't quite mention in our picture is the salt bridge. If we have electrons being moved from the anode to the cathode, we can't keep doing this forever because our cathode would start to build up a negative charge if there's tons of extra electrons there. Likewise, our anode would start to become way too positive if all of the electrons just left. Our salt bridge allows us to counteract this. It's simply a piece of glassware that contains a lot of salt, some soluble ions, which are able to flow to the anode and able to flow to the cathode to help keep our charges neutral as the electrons are transferred around. Some anions will head towards the anode to replace those negative charges from the electrons, and some positive charges will flow towards the cathode in order to balance the charge when those electrons show up. If we stick our salt bridge in here, we're able to keep doing this electron transfer while keeping our charges neutral. We can start to visualize this at the atomic level. In our anode, we have our oxidation. We have zinc losing electrons, turning into zinc ions. Our piece of zinc metal sitting in this beaker is going to slowly get smaller. 
as that zinc dissolves into zinc ions and the electrons leave across the wire. As those electrons show up on the other side, we have our chunk of copper, which is slowly growing as our copper ions in solution gain those electrons and form copper metal. This is our generic voltaic cell. The anode is always drawn on the left. The cathode is always drawn on the right. They're connected by a wire. They're also connected by a salt bridge. For practice, can we draw this voltaic cell marking the anode, the cathode, and the direction of our electron flow? We can start by drawing our two beakers. We're going to have a chunk of metal in each one, and those metals are connected by a wire. On the left, we have our anode. On the right, we have our cathode. The anode is where the oxidation happens. The cathode is where that reduction happens. Lastly, we need to include that salt bridge in order to keep this reaction going. The last tricky bit is to decide where to put our chemicals. We know our oxidation is on the left and our reduction is on the right. Let's decide which element is being oxidized and which is being reduced. We can do that using our oxidation numbers. We can see here that silver is being reduced. Let's put our silver at the cathode. We also need to have our silver ions there to react. Silver plus and silver over there on the right. We can see that nickel is being oxidized. Let's put nickel at the anode. We also need our nickel ions at the anode in order to do this half reaction. So let's have our chunk of nickel on the left submerged in a solution of nickel 2 plus. Our electrons will always flow away from the anode and towards that cathode. There we have it, a nice beautiful diagram of this voltaic cell. The last thing we can do here is introduce some shorthand notation for our voltaic cells. What we want to do is write out our anode beaker with just our chemicals and some vertical lines. Then we can have our reduction beaker with our chemicals and our vertical lines. We want to have a single vertical line separating our phases from each other. We want to have a double vertical line separating our two containers, our two beakers from each other. This is representing our salt bridge. Same thing for our cathode. We want to have our single vertical line separating those phases. The beaker on our left had our nickel and our nickel ions. Let's put our solids on the outsides, our solutions in the middle. Nickel solid in contact with nickel ions. Our salt bridge to separate our two containers. Then we have our silver ions in contact with our silver metal. A couple of special cases here. If we have multiple compounds in the same phase, we can separate them using commas. If we want some extra information, we can include concentrations. And sometimes our redox reactions need to have a connection point so that we can have our electrons flow from a piece of metal across our wire to another piece of metal. But our redox reaction doesn't have two metals to put in each beaker. In that case, we can include an inert electrode which is usually platinum, as our solid phase on one of these sides. Let's illustrate this with an example. We have this voltaic cell where we'd like to write that shorthand notation. In this voltaic cell, we have iron metal as our electrode at the anode. This is in contact with iron ions. Next, we have our salt bridge. And we have lead ions in our cathode beaker. 
those lead ions are in contact with our lead metal electrode. There it is, our shorthand notation. Instead of drawing this diagram of our voltaic cell, we can write out this shorthand notation, which basically represents the same thing. If we want to include some extra information, we can have our concentrations. But that's basically it. For question B, we have our reaction. Now we want to figure out what is going on at the anode, what is going on at the cathode. Copper is turning into copper 2 plus. This is going to be our oxidation. The oxidation happens at the anode. Let's have our copper metal in contact with our copper ions. And then let's put our salt bridge. Our other half reaction involves nitrate turning into nitrogen monoxide. Let's start with our solutions, then let's include our gases, and finally let's include our solid. Our solid isn't included in our half reaction at the cathode, but there does have to be a solid there because, well, just like in our diagram up above, we need to have some connection point for those electrons to show up at. Since there's no conductive metal there as part of our reaction, we'll just use some other metal, in this case platinum, to be there as our place for the electrons to show up at. There we go. There is our shorthand notation for that reaction in question B. Couple of extra tricks here. We have some extra phases. We have an inert electrode. And we can also point out that our balanced reaction is nice and balanced. Our shorthand notation does not have to be balanced. All right, let's leave it here for this one. We can summarize by saying our electrochemical cells have our redox reactions separated into different beakers where the electrons have to traverse a wire, which is great because it allows us to produce some electrical current. For our voltaic cells, these are nice spontaneous reactions. Where the oxidation happens at the anode, the reduction happens at that cathode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Please hang around and catch me in the next video. And until then, have a great day.